the Tom Green Show. It's not the Green Tom Show. This is my favorite show because it is my show. If this was your show, you'd probably like it more than I did. That's just because it was your show. But it's not your show. It's the Tom Green Show. The Tom Green Show. The Tom Green Show. Hello. The Tom Have we got a show tonight, Los Angeles? Have we got a show tonight? Thank you for coming. Welcome uh, to the show. This is Tom Green here, live at the Smod Castle. Yes. And uh, this is very exciting. This is uh, the sixth uh, episode of this show. You see we have a full house tonight. This thing is uh, taken off. And uh, what a show, what a show, what a show we have. We have a very special treat tonight. I don't want to uh, spend too much time here with the introduction, so I'm just going to bring him out. The man of the hour, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Norm MacDonald. Everybody. All right. Hey, Tom. There we go. Yeah. Oh. There we go. What? How's it going? Uh, it's going great, yeah, man. This is this is it, and here we are. See, this is how it works. Yeah, can you believe we're in Hollywood? Yeah, we're in Hollywood. We 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 did it. Yeah, a couple of kids from uh, a couple of kids from the Ottawa Valley. Yeah, Beacon Hill. Yeah, this is uh, a, a a a very uh, we 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 grew up very close to one another. You know, real re really close, just miles away, mere miles away. Jasper, you're on Jasper. That's right. I was on Monson Crescent in Beacon Hill, Ontario, Canada. Everybody, if you're listening on the internet, uh, Google, Google that. And uh, you went to <laughs> Gloucester High School. That's right. Gloucester Gators. I was yeah. a rival high school colonel by Cougars. Are they what they're called? The Cougars? The Cougars, yeah. Yeah. That was before Cougars meant something else, though. Yeah, Cougars used to mean, uh, in my day, Cougars meant a large uh, jungle cat. Yeah. <laughs> now, now it means, uh, what's it mean now? Now it means, uh, I, I don't know. A middle-aged woman who likes having sex with 20-year-olds or something like that? No. Uh, no? It's un very unseemly. Yeah. Something like that, right? Yeah. Something, something disgusting like that, right? Well, this is cool. This is going to be fun. This is uh, my sixth show. It's kind of interesting. Who have you had so far? Who were your first five? Uh, first guest was Bill Burr. Bill Burr, a yeah. great comedian, yeah. great stand-up. Absolutely. Then we State had of the art. Absolutely, it was a, it was awesome, great time. You probably yeah. know everybody that's done the show. We had uh, Joe Rogan last Number week. Number two, Joe. Our last week was Joe Rogan. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, we had drug uh, user. Yep. Self self uh, proclaimed. I yeah, mean, he yeah. talked quite a bit about uh, he takes DMT and so forth. Absolutely. Yeah, we yeah. talked a lot about DMT. Yeah. Do you know so what that the, stuff the, is, or I, it's a very very powerful. Isn't it a. a a tranquilizer of some sort of an animal, cat tranquilizer, yeah, something yeah. like that. I thought I think it comes from a plant or something. Like oh that. yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyways, yeah. What yeah. about those guys? that are like, hey, it's natural. It comes from a plant. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so does uh, heroin, yeah. I think. <laughs> so does cyanide. Yeah. What about uh, <laughs> what was your second guess? Uh, the second guest uh, was Hal Sparks. Hal Sparks. Yeah. Okay. Very entertaining. He's yeah. had a lot of opinions about things. Who else? Uh, the third guest uh, was. I believe Harland Williams. Oh, Harland, yeah, the great Harland Williams, Williams yes. our good friend, yeah, Another Canadian, yeah. A friend of ours, and then uh, John Dore. John Dore, oh, I know John Dore. Yeah, also, he's also, also from Ottawa. He's from Ottawa. He's from Ottawa. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, I worked with him. He's hilarious. Yeah. So, and uh, you know the guy Mario Cantone. Yeah. Yeah, he's gay. You know, uh, out of the closet gay. Yeah. I mean, that's his act that he's gay. You know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is I'm not saying anything that's. Uh, you didn't I'm out not, him. I'm not telling any tales out of school. No, okay, yeah. But anyways, here I am, uh, a young uh, lad, auditioning for the Joan Rivers show when it was on. Yeah. It's the first time I ever came to the United States. Me and Howard Busgang. Yeah. And uh, so me and Howard Busgang and Mario Cantone, um, Joan Rivers likes us all, you know? So we're at the Hyatt Regency, which is across from the comedy store where we uh, auditioned for Joan Rivers. Yeah. And uh, it's uh, me and Howard Busgang are in the room, you know, and uh, Howard <laughs> Busgang uh, smokes uh, smoke marijuana at the time, you know. Sure. I don't. Yeah. You know? But uh, he smoked marijuana and I was watching. Yeah. 
And uh, so uh, I said, uh, Howard, man, it's weird. You're just smoking marijuana all by yourself. Why don't you invite old Mario Cantone over, right? <laughs> so he phones Mario Cantone's uh, room. Mario Cantone goes, yeah, I'll come over. So he comes over like a minute later, all red-faced with his uh, lover, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. He's yeah, also sure. red-faced. They're yeah. drenched in sweat. Okay, yeah. They've just been uh, yeah, fornicating. Yeah, they've been fornicating. Yeah. And... Uh, so they're like, yeah, we'll take some. So they take a quick, uh, you know, uh, sm- uh, smoke this joint so that they'll enhance their uh, orgasm later, right? <laughs> right, sure, okay. And then they give it back to poor Howard Bus Gang. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, st- he's sitting there with this joint that has God knows what on it. Yeah. Yeah. Because, two- yeah. Yeah, so Howard Bus Gang, in, in an <laughs> effort to be politically correct, even though they're gone. Yeah. Uh, uh, smokes the joint and gets full blown AIDS. No, <laughs> no, that's, I just made up that last part. <laughs> no, our bus gang's a great guy. He's 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 doing a show right now. Wow, yeah, in Canada. Well, that's uh, <laughs> no, that was that. That must have been pretty exciting doing the Joan Rivers show first time in. Uh, I didn't do it. Oh, okay. You didn't yeah, do it. No. Uh, Mark Breslin was the booker of it. Who oh, was the yeah. The Yuck Yucks guy. And he said, Hey, come on down and audition for Joan Rivers. And I said, I don't want to do Joan Rivers because I wanted to do the Johnny Carson program. Sure, yeah. And uh, so he said, No, nah, no, nah, just come down. He, you know. So I went down, and then Joan Rivers said, Yeah, you can be on the show. And then I said, No, I don't want to be on the show. <laughs> and then I couldn't work with Yuck Yucks for four months. Right, because he was probably mad about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Joan Rivers, obviously, if you did that show, you wouldn't have done Johnny Carson, I guess. I didn't do Johnny Carson either. <laughs> <laughs> but but I ended up doing Pat Sajak. Yeah, you I remember that. You remember the Pat Sajak show? Yeah. It was very felt like it was he was very much trying to do sort of a Letterman type thing or something. Yes, he was. He like was because he was a he was a, also a funny weatherman like Letterman, you know. Yeah, and. Uh, but he was very nice to me. But he had a uh, he decided to do a ninety minute show. Uh-huh. This was five years after Johnny Carson decided that ninety minutes was too long for him. Right. Yeah. Pat <laughs> Sage, I figured he'd do ninety minutes. So uh, um, there were so many guests that by the end of the show you would be way at the end of the couch. And there was a sidekick, Dan Miller, who uh, Pat told me was the funniest guy in the world. And when Pat started out, wherever he started out with Dan Miller was the anchor. And uh, you know how guys, guys you know are the funniest guy in the world, but only if you know everything about them? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. So, uh, so he was like, oh, you'll love this guy, Dan Miller. So he just sat there. He was, <laughs> he was a nice guy. Yeah. But anyways, there were so many guests. At one point, I was so far down the couch that I looked over at Dan Miller. He was reading a book <laughs> <laughs> during the television program. So then, now, and then, and then, Letterman. Letterman was a, was a, was that soon thereafter? Did you yeah, yeah. I did like five uh, Pat Sajaks, and then Letterman uh, uh, wanted me, and he said, "Yeah, yeah." And then I saw my thing. It said World uh, National Television Debut, and I go, "No, no, I already did Pat Sajak five times." And then they said, "Nah, we'll just say National." <laughs> <television>. <laughs> that didn't count, right? Yeah, that was just the farm league. Wow, that so that but that must because I now I remember when I was like a, a kid, right? And I was I was doing the amateur night at Yuck Yucks, right? That's when I, I yeah I remember I remember when you did Pat Sajak. I remember that it was oh like, really? Oh yeah, I remember that. Everyone <laughs> was talking about it. Yeah. You know, what's funny is that I'd go on the road sometimes, and everyone lies about their credits. You know, yeah. so sometimes I'd be on uh, stage, and uh, they'd. The, the opener, he'd pretend he was on The Tonight Show, and the middle, he'd pretend he was on Letterman. And then I was the headliner. I was on Pat Sajak. And they go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Even though mine was the real credit. Yeah. Did but you get. You, you want to hear a funny story about Pat Sajak? Yeah. One time I was on it. You know, Henny Youngman? Sure. Who ironically was an old man. Yeah. <laughs> no. Wasn't but a young man at all. He wasn't a young man. He was a young man at one point. At one point, when yeah. they when they named him, it made oh, sense. Just didn't change his name as he got older. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so he's on the show, and uh, so Pat Sajak had a uh, uh, an idea every week he'd do all comedy, which is not a good idea, you know, especially when you're the last guy. So uh, Henny Young Man came out, right? And he did. He's a great, great comedian, you know. So he did his comedy, then he goes over and he does the panel with Pat Sajak, right? 
Then, halfway during the panel, he goes, I would like, uh, I'd like to sing a song for the audience. I, it's a little song I made up, you know? So Pat Sajak goes, sure, sure, you know? So he gets up and he walks over to the, um, to the performing area and he goes to step off the riser and he trips. And I'm watching this backstage, you know, and he starts falling. It looks like slow motion, really slow. And then, you know, he's 80 and he goes down like face first, really, really hard on the floor. So they stop tape, and everybody's around, including Pat Sajak. It takes about a half hour to get him up. And uh, he says, I want to continue. He's all like, now he's all blurry, you know. But it's like the show must go on. You know, right, you, sure. you ever hear that? Yeah. Ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> retarded maxim. Yep. So he, uh, he uh, <laughs> thought the show must go on. So now he, they restart it, and he's at the panel again. He's talking to Pat Sajak. And he did doing the same jokes and everything. And he goes, now I'd like to do a song. And then Pat Sajak goes, huh? And he gets up again, and he goes to go to step off the rising again. So, so Pat Sajak stops and he goes, just do it here, just do it here, you know? So he starts playing the, his violin, you know? Yeah. And he sings the song, and the song's all about how great the, it's not a funny song, it's all about how great the audience is. He goes, the audience is like butter crunch. Eh? They're the best if it wasn't for them, you know? So the house goes crazy because here he's, you know, almost died and now he's doing a song about how great the audience is. <laughs> and then I have to go on next. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my God, like, and they just go crazy for him. So then I go on, I bomb for five minutes, you know, and then I walk over to the panel, you know, and you know how a panel on uh, works, the guy's sitting on the chair and then he has to move over to the couch and then you sit on the chair, right? Yeah. But um, Henny Youngman at this point is half dead sitting on the chair, <laughs> right? So he ain't moving, you know? So you had to sit on the couch and yeah, talk Yeah, so over I had to him. climb over him yeah. and sit on the couch. So now there's a three shot. Pat Sajak's interviewing me, and there's a dead guy in between us. <laughs> so we're doing our uh, pre planned, you know, stuff. And. Uh, you got a dog, and I got a dog, and all this stuff, you know. And meanwhile, there's just a dead guy looking straight forward. <laughs> and we do this for a couple of minutes in this insane three shot. And then all of a sudden, he snaps out of it, and he just looks over at me, and he goes, Nice shirt! <laughs> Somewhere there's a canopy missing on an Italian restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> that was the story. Did you now? Now, did you get nervous when you would do these early shows? Would you get nervous? Yeah, you? I get pretty nervous. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm always nervous. I'm nervous when I'm not doing shows. I'm you are. I'm just nervous all the time now. Something's well, I'm nervous all the time too. But I bet that people would think you and I weren't nervous. That would be my guess. Yeah, that's why I was asking because you know I, I I I would think that maybe you wouldn't be. Yeah. Yeah. So I would think you wouldn't be. Yeah. Well, I kind of think you wouldn't be. Well, you can't judge a book by its cover. Yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, Except well, Mein Kampf. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the swastika and the, the yeah. black <laughs> leather binding kind of gives it away a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Well, so that's cool. So then, okay, well, this is cool. So wait, tell me what... <laughs> what's, your, what's something you remember about Beacon Hill that you think that maybe nobody would remember? I had an interesting conversation the other day. I ran into someone from Beacon Hill, and they, they talked about how they, uh, they used to like going up to the skillet uh, at the Zellers uh, to get fries and gravy. Did you ever do that? Oh, I thought you meant the skillet was a ride. I do remember, remember the, that. The yeah. Zellers department yeah, store at sure. the mall had sure. a restaurant in yeah, it? Yeah, the skillet, of course, yeah. And you could get you fries get, yeah, and gravy sure, there? Sure, you get fries and gravy. You get a grilled cheese sandwich with a pickle. Yeah. Yeah. That was something that I hadn't thought of in a, a long skillet. time. Yeah, I never have either. At first when you said skillet, I thought you were talking about a ride or something that I hadn't yeah. heard of. But yeah, that's uh, that's really going back. This is something that nobody uh, in Beacon Hill would even really <laughs> have any enjoyment uh, I know, listening to because it's not even there anymore. <laughs> but uh, Yeah, that's going way back. Yeah. <laughs> skillet, wow. Any any anything that you think that we could talk about about Beacon Hill that nobody listening would have any interest Interested? in hearing about, <laughs> but maybe might be kind of cool for us to talk about for a second? Um, no. What about you? Well, there was. Uh, remember the vibes. Remember vibes. Uh, the record store at yes. the Beacon Hill Mall. Yeah, I remember that. The mall was very centric for my, me growing up. It there. was. Yeah, I, I worked at the Dairy Queen. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my brother worked at that Dairy Queen. Yeah. Yeah. So wait, where are you? Uh, 
I, I've been doing stand-up comedy this year. Yeah, I know. It's very exciting. Tom, uh, out of the blue, decided to do stand-up comedy. Yeah, it's been exciting. It's been and very probably much rose quicker than any stand-up comic in history. Well, it's I've, I've been very inspired by you and uh, a lot of the guests that I've had on the web show. Uh. And there's people, you know, I've been interviewing so many comedians over the last few years, and I'm just thinking, geez, why am I not trying to do this? So I've uh, now, but now we're playing together on New Year's Eve. Oh, yes, that's very exciting. It's going to be a good New Year's Eve this year in yeah, Dallas. Yeah, I haven't done a New Year's Eve show for years. Yeah, we're going to fly together to Dallas. Yeah. It's going to be a fun uh, little adventure for us. Yeah, where are we playing? We're playing uh, in Dallas, I believe. <laughs> yeah. it's in, it's in Have Dallas. you been to Dallas? I've been to Dallas before, yeah. Have you seen Daily Square? Yeah, I went down to, uh, to, um, where, uh, to the book depository. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to the top of the book depository. I went and stood on the grassy knoll. Oh, yeah. You're a conspiracy theorist on almost everything, right? Uh, well, I like, to, I like to watch the videos. I don't know whether I believe one story or the other story. My understanding is, it, is, that, um, my understanding is that JFK was, uh, was assassinated by the, uh, a joint operation between the uh, Russian KGB and the Cuban Secret Service. That's my <laughs> understanding. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I could be wrong about that. Yeah. <laughs> you could be. <laughs> <laughs> Some people say it's just that guy Lee Harvey Oswald, yeah. you know. So, but it yeah. seemed a little bit uh, unlikely. The Lee Harvey Oswald. Well, the angles looked a little off. Yeah. You know, the angles looked yeah. a little off. You know, because you, you know, know they often say about these conspiracy theories, they say that the reason that they come up is because. Um, on one side, you have JFK, and on the other side, you have Lee Harvey Oswald. JFK, an enormous uh, uh, historical figure, and Lee Harvey Oswald, a nobody. And since people can't adjust to the fact that a nobody could kill a very important person, then they have to, to weigh the balance. And since they have Kennedy on one side, they have to put something equal on the other side yeah. to pretend there's justice in the world. They do say, though, that JFK uh, uh, made more assassination attempts uh, on foreign leaders than any president in the history of the United States. Oh, uh, karma. On Fidel Castro, was uh, many attempts there, you know, poison toothpaste and... Uh, poison toothpaste? All, all these uh, exploding cigars and things yeah, like that. Yeah, I heard this. about the exploding cigars. Yeah, yeah poison toothpaste and exploding cigars. <laughs> you got all those assassination attempts from a novelty store. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now Lee Harvey Oswald, of course, he was uh, uh, defected to Russia. He was a, a U.S., I believe, Navy, and he uh, apparently was responsible for bringing the plans to Russia for the U-2 spy plane that enabled the Russians to shoot down the U-2 spy plane. Yeah. And then he defected. The, the one that Francis Gary Powers was at the helm of? Yeah, I'm not sure. Was that the pilot? Yeah. It was a U.S. pilot, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. 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 They had a French guy flying it? <laughs> Who? What? Francis Gary Powers. Oh, Francis. Is that the pilot's name? Yeah, yeah, no, I yeah. I can't remember, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I thought yeah. you said Francis Gary Powers. <laughs> Not I, Francis Gary Powers. I thought you said Francis <laughs> Gary Powers, which doesn't sound like a French name Gary at all. Gary Powers? No. I, the, uh, when I was just in Canada, they gave me a, uh, a, uh, a DVD of... Uh, a Canadian TV movie on Rocket Richard, so I'm, I'm going to be uh, interested in watching that. Uh, maybe I'll bring it up to the house and we'll watch it together. Wait, you, you just picked that up? Uh, a guy gave it to me in Winnipeg, yeah. Really? That's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. Does it a look like a good production? or? Yeah, I'm very interested in seeing it because my dad hated Rocket Richard. Yeah. Because during the war, the, the French uh, wouldn't fight. You know, the French Canadians wouldn't fight in the Second World War. So that's when Rocket Richard broke all the records in the NHL when all the English uh, players were, uh, were serving the Queen. Oh, really? This is true, huh? Yeah. This is true? Because, of course, the French would not want to fight in a war that uh, in England's war. You yep. know what I mean? This is another thing that we have uh, uh, similarity in our background. We both grew up on Canadian Army bases. Yeah, right. CFB uh, Valcartier. And you were in Trenton or something, right? Petawawa. Petawawa, Petawawa. CFB Petawawa. Where the airborne was. Yeah. yeah. My dad was Army, captain in the Army. Yeah. And, uh, and you know what's going on there now? Maybe in Petawawa. Do you know that story? 
uh, hazing? Are they all hazing? Each oh, other? No, the, there was all a serial murderer. They all shit on each other a lot, don't they? <laughs> Do you remember a few years ago there was all those videos that came out with them rubbing shit all over each other? <laughs> the Canadian that? Army? <laughs> no. no it was maybe it was a scandal not really worth <laughs> bringing up again, I guess. <laughs> that was really the hazing? Homage to my, uh, that was the hazing? Military. There was a ha- some hazing scandal a few yeah. years ago. I thought you were going to bring that up. No, what are they doing? Uh. <laughs> Remember when you used to put the shit on the microphone? Yeah, exactly. That's, I'm sure that's where that came from. <laughs> I'm sure that's where that came from. Do you think you invented that whole genre, the jackass? Well, I, I, I know I, I invented... Was there anyone before you? I know you? I invented putting poo on a microphone. Was I've there never anyone seen before, that before you? Uh, well, I was, you know... Uh, you know, I was just kind of copying uh, Candid Camera and Letterman, basically, you know, you know, but, uh, you know, so I'm sure, yeah, sure. No, no, but was there anyone before you that did the... Uh, the, vi- the home video stuff, running yeah. around with the video camera. Yeah. Uh, I was inspired by skateboard videos and things right. like this and, uh, and, uh, and Letterman, you know, yeah. and him yelling at people with a megaphone right. out of the window and all that kind of stuff. So, but... Uh, and then how do you feel? Because you, like, obviously grew out of it. Yeah. Right. Not really, no. I just uh, well, I mean, you're not like Johnny Knoxville. Like, if you when you see Johnny Knoxville, do you go, "Holy fuck, these guys should stop"? Uh, n- n- like you know Steve-O. Yeah, I do know Steve-O. Yeah. Do you well, ever, you know, the, you they, they took they took the self mutilation mutilation stuff further than I did. I did some gross stuff, but I, right. I never really got into the self, um, you know. Uh, but my point stuff. is, I didn't have it, my testicle removed on my show, <laughs> but that was not for a voluntary, uh, voluntarily. You know. But I'm saying, but don't you feel it's a young man's game? Do you feel once they? Did you see Jackass Three? I haven't seen that one yet. No, oh, it's very moving in a way. Really, it is in a in a, in a sense it is, but uh, moving. It's a little like a bowel movement, or no, no. <laughs> no it's rather. An, I will. It see has it. some very emotional moments in it, but. Uh, but uh, there, there are times when you go, boy, uh, these guys are getting a little, uh, they're not kids anymore. Yeah. Well, you know, Johnny has a few kids in his own, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, it got to a point that uh, the physical stuff uh, started getting a little bit too uh, uh, exhausting. You know? and that's, uh, but, uh, you know, I sort of look at it now and I think, geez, that uh, $150 million looks nice that yeah, they made. Right. <laughs> so... <laughs> you know, uh, I, I can't say uh, I I uh, I don't think it uh, looks like a, a lot of fun what they're doing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, but um, you know, why are we if talking I, about me I here? You, I thought, uh, if well, I well, asked well, you, if I asked you, here? if I asked you, if I said, uh, would I? If, if I asked you, if I said, Tom, would you give me a million dollars if I cut off your leg? What would you say? Wait, say that again. If say I that. give you, if you, I offered you a million dollars. To cut off your leg, would you accept? You offered me a million dollars to cut no, off would, your right leg. No, no, I would not accept. If that. I offered you a million dollars to cut off your left leg, would you accept? Mm, no, but what about if I offered you a uh, million dollars to cut off both of your arms? No, would you accept? You no. would not accept. No, no. So you're admitting to me that your arms and legs are worth more than three million dollars. Then treat oh, them like that. Treat them like that oh, for wait. God's sakes. Treat oh, them like that. I would get a million each for each limb. No. Oh, because I would take that. I'd take three million for two arms and a leg. I'd do that. I'd take three million for two arms and a leg, but not one million for one leg. No, I just. I could use three million. I'd sit around and watch TV all day. Twi- <laughs> tap my fingers on my one good hand. <laughs> I'd, have, I'd have the remote, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, but I don't. You no, know, you lose your cock, too. Yeah. What, 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 how, much, how much for chopping the cock off? Uh, you never mentioned that. That was implied. I actually, have, I actually have questions here. I actually have some questions. Oh, you got some questions? Yeah, let's, let's, uh... <laughs> I said no questions. Really? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Do you have any SNL stories that you've never told before? Um, Behind the scenes? Uh, any of stories? SNL? Yeah, that you've never I'm told sure before. I'm sure I've got millions, but what do you mean? I can't think of any. I'm... Because something I mean, that you know, things happen all is the there time. anything that anything that you've ever never talked about before that you've yeah, thought about? Yeah, I'm a sure lot? there's lots, but I. 
You didn't talk about it for a reason? Or? Uh, no, no, I'm just <laughs> I just need to leave. Things people. changed. Every, things would happen every single day. So there was hundreds and thousands of stories. Yeah. I, I, I want to try to not ask you questions that we've talked about before. Oh, I see, I see. Well, yeah. you have to be more specific. Okay. Um. <laughs> you can't ask a person to fucking ask their own question. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I thought I'd try to see if I could get away with it. <laughs> Um, I, I didn't. <laughs> you know, I've noticed that you've, you've been interviewed a lot now. Do you, there's a new th- technique in interviewing, I've noticed, when I do these f- goddamn interviews on the phone. Yeah. Uh, with radio people. And at the end, they go, is there anything that I didn't ask that I should have? Uh-huh. Have yeah. you ever heard that one? Sure, yeah, absolutely. The, yeah, I, yeah. Well, because they usually also ask the same questions all the time. Because it, we were talking yeah, about this do, earlier. Yeah. It's sort of basically... Everybody's entire life now is on Wikipedia. Right. So you get all the Wikipedia questions. I asked you something before the show because I'd never heard that you were a painter or a basketball <laughs> oh, yeah, player. Right, 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 right. And it turns out you're not a painter, I'm not a painter, and not a, not a basketball, basketball player. Because that's on, on your that's on your Wikipedia. It's on page. Wikipedia, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. What was it? Uh, I, I know we've talked about this before, but I watched it again today because I always love watching this uh, on YouTube. Uh, is uh, when you. Uh, Hosted or did comedy at the White, Hor- White House, uh, not the White Horse <laughs> Correspondence Dinner. <laughs> that would have been cool, too. And the White Horse, Yukon. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. No, at the White House Correspondence Dinner yeah, yeah, in front yeah, of yeah, Bill yeah. Clinton. Yes. Was that, that was, uh, I, I enjoy watching that one because of the, you know, the sort of the way it really ramps up. You know, yeah. it starts out and I think people didn't know what to think because you really kind of come in hard on some of the, on some of the people in the audience. Yeah, and then yeah, it, yeah. It, uh, That must have been a fun Experience was was that fun or was that nerve wracking? It was fun meeting Larry Flint. I think we may have talked about this. I don't know. It was odd. uh, Well, I don't know if we talked about Larry Flint. It was why was Larry Flint there? That was because every year at the White House Correspondence Center, somebody brings like an odd guest or a novelty guest, and this year somebody had brought Larry Flint. Yeah. For some reason, I think maybe because the movie came out or something like that uh, about him, and uh, so he was there, and I met him afterwards, and. he rolled up to me, you know, he lives in a wheelchair. Yeah. And uh, so he says to me, he says, uh, he says, <laughs> huh? yeah. I go, what the fuck are you talking about? So uh, then he said, I had to get real close to him, you know, and I get very uncomfortable around people in wheelchairs and shit like that. And uh, what? Huh? You do? Yeah, because I have to make eye contact with them. And, <laughs> well, uh, and while I'm making eye contact with them, I go, I hope they don't see a weird look on my fucking face. Right. So uh, not he not sure went, how to how to act. I don't know how to act. Yeah. yeah. So anyways, finally I understood him. He's like, Why are you coming? Oh, hey. oh, look me up. So I'm like, Yeah, okay, I'll look you up. Yeah. I, I, and he I, said, I I'll take care of you. Right here. So then I was like, Take care of me. What the fuck does that mean, right? That you take my good. Un- you take my uncle Basil. Yeah. Back in uh <laughs> back <laughs> lives back in in uh in uh, Bell's Corners yeah. in Ottawa. If he said, "Hey, I'll take care of you when you come to Bell's Corners." That would mean if we if you went over to his house, he'd serve you <laughs> a nice chicken pot pie, you right. know? Bull- <laughs> and uh you'd watch Matlock. Right. But um Larry Flint. Mhm. I think it would involve me having sex with a lady. No. And there Larry Flint all of a sudden coming in whacking off in a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only guessing, but Yeah, that doesn't sound perfect. Anyways. No. <laughs> now wait, you were in the people versus Larry Flint Flint. Was this before That's right. Was this played, before uh, or after uh when you met him? That was uh I don't know. I was no, it was before. It was before I met him, yeah. I well, mean it was after I met him. It was after I met him. It was the people against Larry Flint. Yeah, people versus Larry Flint. People versus Larry Flint. Yeah, yeah. And I played one of the people. Yeah. Weren't you, you were a reporter in the movie? Or? Yeah, I was a reporter. Milos Forman, who was the director, who's this brilliant director who directed uh, Amadeus and... Uh, and um, Man on the Moon. Man on the but most notably, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Yeah. And uh, he, <laughs> well, he used to watch Saturday Night Live, and he liked me, and he got in his head that I could act. 
<laughs> so he goes, uh, Norma, you're, good. you're a great actor, I can tell. And I, you know, I'm just doing jokes, you know, on the weekend update. And I'm like, I don't think so, uh, Milos. I, I think you're wrong. <laughs> and he's like, I can tell. I, that puts her in the movie. So he would offer me roles in movies, huge roles, right? And I would go, no, 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 this is way too big a role, Milos. You don't want me in this, trust me, you know? And <laughs> so he would give me smaller roles. And uh, then I played a reporter <laughs> in this. And then I didn't know, I don't know how to drive a car, as you know, you know? So yeah. I, go, I don't even know how to drive a car. How can I be a reporter? He goes, you'll be a reporter that drives a cab. <laughs> <laughs> so I was a reporter that was always in the back of a cab. Yeah, yeah. And a cab would show up and I'd jump up. <laughs> So anyways, this is how bad an actor I am. I'm in a scene with Woody Harrelson, who played uh, Larry Flint. And we're talking, you know, and I'm just bullshitting with him and everything. And then all of a sudden, I hear Milos go, what the fuck are you doing? I go, what? He goes, you're way off script, way off script. I didn't know I was in the scene. <laughs> <laughs> because Woody, Allen, uh, Woody Harrelson is such a convincing actor, I thought he was just talking to me. Right, right, right. <laughs> I thought he was just speaking with me. <laughs> So, you know, he's like, why are you asking Larry Flint if he likes to smoke a lot of dope? <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. So he's a great guy. So uh, when, you were, when you were doing Weekend Update. Milos told me a funny story. When he okay. came to Los Angeles, he came. He lived under five different regimes, by the way, you know. Because when, when he was talking to me about Man in the Moon, he goes, how do you feel about the freedom of speech? I go, I don't give a fuck. He goes, uh... He goes, I live under uh, regimes with no freedom. That's very important, you know. So it really opened my eyes. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> but um, um, I forgot what I was going to say. WikiLeaks. What do you think about that? Freedom WikiLeaks? Of WikiLeaks. Wik WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks. Yeah. WikiLeaks, yeah. Yeah. That's what, what do I think of it? What do you think of that freedom of speech issue right now? Is this? Uh, are we uh, having our uh, press, uh, is our freedom of the press being infringed upon here? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I'm not uh, smart enough to know. I mean, uh, that's a tough one, man. What do you think? I know that if it was another mm. country, you know, that they might, that you might go like, uh, hey, how dare the Iraqis stop people from uh, stop the press, you know? Yeah. So I don't know. They shut the whole site down. They've, they did? They've canceled the, the PayPal account, his Visa cards that run the site. Everything Who are my, shut down. Uh, 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 Somebody, yeah, yeah, someone up there did. Someone. And he was charged today with uh, I don't know molesting two girls. Yeah. I don't know if that's what he's saying. He's being framed for that. So He's saying that, yeah, yeah. which seems, I, which seems uh, probable. Yeah. It does seem probable, you think? Well, you I mean, yeah. fuck. You think, right? You yeah. take on the American government, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Maybe right? if you were in the middle of taking on the government, though, maybe you'd think you could get away with it because you could always blame it on a frame-up job. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe we should. How do you think this movie would work? People versus Norm MacDonald. <laughs> that wouldn't be very interesting. I think that'd be good. I think it'd be good. What about when they do that? It's like the state of California versus you. <laughs> what fucking chance do you have? The United States of America versus me. Well, look, uh, Wesley Snipes was on Larry King tonight. He's going to uh, prison. Yeah, on just because he didn't pay his taxes. Yeah, he said he says he just forgot or something. <laughs> he claims it was a mistake. <laughs> but uh, that's like that Steve Martin joke. You remember? Hmm? He says when, when he said uh, a way to not pay your taxes. <laughs> No, it's like a real thing. But he said in one of his albums, he said, a way to not pay your taxes, you know. He goes, uh, you uh, uh, you don't pay your taxes, and then when they come, you go, I forgot. Yeah, that's what he's doing. <laughs> and that's what Wesley's doing? Well, no, actually, you know, he was on Larry King, and he was actually saying that, um, I don't know what the fuck he was saying, to be honest with you. It was it, he, he was saying that he... Uh, I think you should have his a accountant screwed up. I think you should have. Oh yeah, I could saying see that. Saying his accountant screwed up, and uh, that he was really only supposed to be getting charged with a misdemeanor, uh, uh -huh. but the judge is sending him away for th three misdemeanors, three years in jail, maximum sentence for a misdemeanor. But right. the, the jury was supposed to not be sending him to jail. But we don't have to talk about what Wesley. Well, the sentence. interesting thing is that though that uh, with taxes they'll always put you in jail. They won't fine you. 
Yeah. Because they, they want, because otherwise people wouldn't pay their taxes and just it'd be like a gambling thing. It'd be like an insurance policy. So I'm going to pay my taxes and then if I get caught, I'll pay the fine. So every other crime, you might not go to jail except that one. I had this thought yesterday, and I don't know if it's probably not a good idea to put this out there because it could actually happen, uh -huh. and then it might get traced back to me, and somehow I might get, end up getting in trouble for this. Yeah, yeah. But I had this idea, you know, with this new, you know, Facebook and all the social networking and our ability to, to rally people together, right? Somebody could s very easily start a Facebook page called the um, Let's Not pay our taxes starting on this date page, okay? Uh -huh. And then everybody who joins the page, let's say it's like, you know, 15 million people on the page. As soon as it gets to 15 million people on the page, right? Yeah. All of those people on one day, tax time, decide to not pay their taxes. You can't throw 15 million people wow. in jail, right? Oh, yeah. So then that works, right? And then somebody else does another similar page, you know, because these things always get viral. Yeah. And then everybody does it at the same time. At the same time, that's the key, right? At the right. same time, right. everybody at the same time stops paying their taxes at the same time. That'd be a pretty crazy Facebook page, huh? Yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah. And then no one would have to pay their taxes. Yeah. But then it would trace back to this moment where I'm saying <laughs> it and putting it on iTunes. And probably I'd be the one who gets thrown in the jail for everybody not paying their, their taxes, which doesn't seem fair to me. No, you're just expressing an idea. Just an idea, right? Yeah, it's just a word, an idea, a thought. Yeah. So we're starting this page. Uh, <laughs> it could work, though. That's what's scary about I think it. it could work. It could work, you know? What if you said everyone on a certain date um, show up at Nate and Al's? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's uh well that that's uh, that's that see that stuff works. It's a flash mob, right? But this is just a flash mob of people not paying is that their what it's taxes. Called? A flash, yeah, flash mob? mob. Yeah. Everybody show up at Nate and Al's at the same time dressed as a waiter and go top up Larry King's coffee. <laughs> <laughs> he eats there every day. Every day, man. Yeah. He was it fun Larry doing King. Did you you did an impression of Larry King? I was on Larry King once. Yeah, how was that? Oh, it was fun, man. It was just fun. It's fun to be sitting. You, you've probably been on the show. No, I haven't, no. Oh, it's just fun sitting across from like an icon like that. I'll miss that guy. Yeah. This he, is I thought a, he was fantastic. I know people didn't like him, but I loved him. I think people uh, who say they don't like him just don't understand what they're talking about. Because yeah. it's that long format thing that is gone, you know. That, yeah, it's you know, gone now. It's He's not the really last one. Like that on TV. And I was thinking it's kind broadcaster, of... Broadcaster, real I, broadcaster. Yeah, I kind of going to miss having kind of an older guy on TV hosting a show, you know? I mean, you know, on yeah. one hand, you have people say, oh, he's too old or whatever, but I'm going to miss having a guy on TV who's sort of been through different decades, had different perspectives on the sure. world, probably a certain element of just having seen it all, not it's giving like a It's like Orson crap. Welles said. He said, you know, he once said to a young person, he said, I know what it is to be young, but you do not know what it is to be old. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to miss that. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to miss I'll that. I'll miss Larry. Yeah. yeah. You had a good uh, zinger on him at the White House Correspondents' Dinner. That was Ooh. one of the ones that got a big laugh. And oh, did Alan, I? Yeah, and uh, you said, uh, 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 well, I'll probably screw this up, I'm, uh, but it was something about... If uh, your uh, desserts are a little late, don't worry. Uh, they'll be coming out. Larry King just uh, proposed to the waitress. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, it was, it's, it's, was, that's what it was, yeah. yeah. Yeah, if your dinners are a little late at table seven. If your dinners are a little late at table seven, don't be alarmed. Larry King just proposed to the waitress. I think you might have said he married the waitress, actually. Just married the waitress. Yeah, it's at table seven if you're... <laughs> 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 but the yeah, interesting thing about Larry King, the reason he gets married is he does not have premarital sex. Yes. People wonder why he gets married so often. Is that true? Yeah. He's very romantic, and uh, so he falls in love with a girl. The same way that they did back in the 30s, you know right. what I mean? When there was no premarital sex. Sure, sure. And then uh, they found out come uh, honeymoon night whether or not they were sexually compatible. That's, uh, that's, that's well, I, I don't, I'm not one to talk about marriages and how you're supposed to uh, get into them. Cause, uh, <laughs> but uh, that doesn't sound like such a good idea. No, 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 no. So when, you're, when you were doing the White House Reese is still doing well. 
What's that? Reese Witherspoon. Oh, yeah, she's doing good. She's yeah. still doing well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when you would look over at Bill Clinton. Yeah. You're, you're, you're doing jokes. Yes. Um, and he was laughing. Yeah. But sometimes it kind of felt like maybe he was kind of a little mad, was he? Or Well, he kind of has to laugh. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Hillary looked mad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hillary looked mad at a few times. Yeah, 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 yeah. She was... Like after before the thing, you meet them both, you know, and uh, they come through the room and they walk through. I may have told you this too, but she's a, he's a big, happy drunk, you know, big red face, big red nose, the happiest guy you've ever seen, and she's sour as a you know, sour lady. <laughs> and uh, he was walking through and uh, mm -hmm. talking to everybody, just talking to everybody. And it occurred to me as he was walking through, how on earth do you talk to everybody? I didn't know how. And so I was like, I wonder what he's going to say to me, like when he comes up to me, because he's speaking to every single person. And I couldn't do that. I wouldn't know what to say. So anyways, he came up to me. At the time, I was eating a pickle. you know. And he came up to me, and uh, I said, uh, hello, Mr. President. It's a pleasure to meet you. He goes, hello. I can't do an impression of him. He goes, hello, hello. He goes, I see you're eating a pickle. <laughs> and then he... He just moved on, and I was like, hey, it was cool, the president. And then uh, late at night, when I was sleeping in my room, I bolted up upright in a cold sweat, and I, no, I didn't do that. <laughs> but uh, have you ever done that? I think it's only in the movie. Bolted up at night in the cold You know sweat? in the movies when they're sleeping, and then they wake yeah. up, and they bolt it upright? Yeah. But uh, no, later that night, I was thinking, I was like, holy fuck, man, he asked me, he just said I was eating a pickle. Sort of like he maybe goes around and just sort of comments on the most sort of obvious thing yes, that's going on. Yes, and you're kind of in a hypnotic state, you know, because you're talking to the leader of the free world, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I liked, I liked after, I mean, I really, in, that's one thing that's great about YouTube. Have you gone back and watched that ever? No. You've never gone back and watched no. it? No. That's one thing that's great about YouTube is that you can go back and watch all I have stuff. seen some stuff that I've done. Because at the end of the uh, White House Correspondents' Dinner, uh -huh. uh, you know, uh, you know, you see him come up and talk to you again. You didn't have the pickle at the time, but he comes up and talks to you. And yeah. there's just sort of this moment where, you know, the credits are rolling and you're just sort of, you're standing on the stage and you just look so stoked. Like you're like looking around with this smile on your face, like going like, holy shit, man. I just fucking yeah. killed it in front of the president. <laughs> <laughs> Got to be a good feeling. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Should go watch that again. Yeah. I would have always liked to have met Pierre Trudeau, but I never got a chance. Oh, yeah. 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 He uh, canoed to uh, Cuba from Miami. <laughs> he wrote did? A, he rode a, he, uh, yeah, by himself, paddled to Miami. Wow. Yeah. Well, Canadian know. Prime Minister Pierre Elliott Trudeau. I know he would portage uh, uh, across Canada with the canoe. He was, uh, across, that's a long portage. Yes. What about the fact he was famous for saying... Uh, because apparently he made love to a woman in a canoe. And they said, how did you do that? And he, asked, he said, you have to be very, very good at canoeing. <laughs> 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 he, was a, he was a funny guy. Very funny guy, yeah. yeah. When, he was, uh, when he finally uh, retired, they asked him how, uh, what he was going to miss. And he, he said, um, well, uh, I won't have you to kick around anymore mm -hmm. to the yep. press, you know, and... Yeah. Fuddle Duddle. Fuddle Duddle, yeah. Yeah. The uh, FLQ crisis. This is, uh, I, love, I love the Canadian stuff. Fédération Lib de Libération de Québec. Front de Libération de Québec. What is it? Front de Libération de Québec. Front, okay, yeah. Front de Libération de Québec. Yeah. The terrorists. We had terrorists. Yeah. We had terrorists before, in, you, before in America, Canada. yeah. We had terrorists in the 60s in Canada. They were blowing up mailboxes and stuff. Yeah. It was martial law, right? Martial law for three days, yeah. Machine guns on the streets of Canada. Yeah. They pulled out the machine gun. Yeah, my, I remember my dad when I was a little boy got stopped and uh, and a guy had a machine gun on by the side and I remember being real, real scared. Y yeah. yeah? Yeah, yeah. Was this yeah. out on uh, on the base? It was on base Valcartier, yeah. And I was really scared because uh, my dad uh, had uh, the British ambassador's dead body in the trunk. <laughs> Yeah, no. yeah. No, that's not true. Was that uh, James Cross? Was yes. That? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> a little Canadian history there, you know. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, now, speaking of uh, history now, uh, uh, on the, because uh, uh, that's, that's what the whole crisis was about, right? They killed a, they killed they and killed kidnapped a, a couple of people. Yeah, they, Pierre, Pierre Laporte, Laporte, right? Pierre exactly, Laporte, James yeah. Cross, James and who was Cross. the other one? Was Somebody. there a third? I don't know. I don't remember. No, but you, uh, you uh, on the, uh, this is something that's pretty cool, on who, who wants to be a millionaire. You won the whole damn thing for a no, charity. No, I didn't. Well, you, you did, but... You I want to. I want to. You could win a million. I want you, half a million. So. You, you, you. And, but it, you know, I, I watched that again today too. Did you? <laughs> on YouTube, and uh, you know, in who wants to be a millionaire? You get asked questions. You can phone a friend. It's a very uh, high stakes. A lot of tension. Uh, you got up to the last question. You'd yeah. already won half a million for your charity. Yeah. You had the opportunity to answer one more question yeah. to get a million dollars. And Reed just kind of talked you out of it, didn't he? Yes. It, well, it was a very, it was a it was a it was a huge misunderstanding that happened. And you ended up really having the right answer. I had the right answer. Yeah. It was a big misunderstanding that happened during the show, as I was going. I actually knew every answer to every question, and as I was going on, every time I'd go to say an answer, he'd go, "Hold on now," you know, and I thought I saw something in his eyes. And I go, what? Uh, okay, I'll, I'll use my phone a friend or something. And then You were sure you were right. Yeah, I was pretty sure. And then the phone a friend would say that's the same answer. And I go, ah, I wasted a lifeline. And then he'd give me a funny look again, so I'd use my 50-50. And the same thing, you know? And then, uh, so I, I wasted all my lifelines. Then I get to the million-dollar answer, and I go, I, I'll say number C. And I go to say it, and he goes, hold on now. Because once you say final answer, like it's over, and he goes, ah, come on. You know, you don't want to lose a half a million dollars for your charity, you know, and all this. And I thought he knew the right answer. I thought he was telling me, don't go for he it. He doesn't know the answer. Turns out he doesn't know the answer. He, I found that out after the show. Yeah. Cause and also, between commercials, right before the million dollar answer, we were backstage watching the Notre Dame game, which is uh, Regis's favorite uh, team. So he was rooting them on, and I was rooting them on because I bet $50,000 on the game. And uh, so Regis uh, was very alarmed Wait, at my really? gambling. You really and had. So, yeah. <laughs> so if you watch the million dollar question, you can see like him going, "You got a gambling streak, and you don't." You? Like he knew that I was uh, at that point that I was a gambler. And he didn't want me to just throw it all away. So yeah. he he wasn't trying to. No, no. Screw me. No, it's clear it. what happened. But then, uh, but if you were ultimately a hundred percent sure of the answer being right. Yeah. Well, obviously I wasn't a hundred percent sure. Yeah. That, that that was pretty cool. Yeah, it was fun though. And an interesting thing is, so five I sent five hundred thousand dollars to Paul Newman and the Hole in the Wall Gang, which was my. You charity. were playing for Paul Nor Newman. He doesn't need yeah. money. <laughs> well, he does this great stuff for Hole in the Wall Gang yeah. for these sick kids, you know. And he's my hero and everything. Yeah. So then he said, "Come and I'm coming to the thing and meet me," you know, which is my dream, meeting Paul Newman. And then I didn't do it because I'm afraid of uh, things. But uh, really, you were too <laughs> nervous to go meet Paul Newman. Yeah. Okay. A couple of times, Johnny Carson wanted to meet me. Paul Newman wanted to meet me, and I always think I, I get in there, what the f what the fuck am I gonna say? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Johnny Carson's gonna tell me a story, and then what do I go? Hey, want to hear a story about Chris Kattan? Like what the fuck do I got? <laughs> what do I gotta tell him? You know? <laughs> so uh, I, ne I never took it up or anything. But the interesting thing is the Hole in the Wall <laughs> gang, they got this check from me. I'd like to hear a story about Chris Kattan. <laughs> I'd be happy. To, that'd be cool. I guess so. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> the $500,000 that I sent to, in my name to the Hole in the Wall gang, right? Now, every year, they think I have $500,000 all the time. Oh, okay. So they want to, me to send. So I send them a couple of thousand and then they they sent me another letter, you know, a week later. Going, Where's the rest? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what do you think about uh, Sarah Palin? Sarah Palin? I know you're pretty uh, apolitical. Yeah, Sarah. I'm apapolitical, yeah. You but I have opinions do. about people. Yeah, you tend to not weigh in too much on one uh, side no, or the other. I am I'm very unpolitical because I don't know things. <laughs> so I don't dare make a... I don't dare have an opinion on things I don't know. But you've made some pretty wild political statements uh, over the years. Like well, uh, maybe just for laughs. But yeah. uh, Sarah Palin, though, I think is a moron. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think that's pretty evident. <laughs> now, so I think uh, uh, 
you know, and I I don't think uh, Republicans r would really want her to be their their spokesman. You think there's a possibility that that could happen, or, uh, or what? What? How would you feel about that if that happened? Well, I think it would be terrible because I think we should have a choice. You know, as little choice as we have, two people. That's our choice. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, it would be, be It's better than one. Yeah. It's sometimes so, odd that there's so only... So Sarah Palin was one of them, then you don't have one choice. Yeah. It's this pendulum swinging back and forth. Yeah. Between the right and the left. Why don't they have four parties? Yeah, like Canada. Yeah. Maybe a new Democratic Party and a, a Bloc Quebecois. That'd be cool if the, the Bloc, Bloc Quebecois, Quebecois got a party yeah. going down here in the States. <laughs> <laughs> the Reform the reform party. So yeah. now, uh, what what do you think about the fact that OJ OJ Simpson ended up uh, in prison after all? Because you know, you I think it's to, terrible. Used to uh, used to. Uh, I think I, it's awful. I think that you shouldn't go to prison for your life for stealing uh, something that was originally yours in the first place. Like, you're stealing a jersey that you owned, and then you're given life in prison for that. Yeah, that's insane. That's crazy. Yeah. You think it was a little bit of a, okay, we didn't get you last time, so. Yeah. And the reason I ask you this is because. I do course, think that. Yeah. It is that. And way. I think it's bad for OJ because there's a thing in prison called a, a pecking order. Mm -hmm. So um, a person who steals his own sports memorabilia, very low on the pecking order. <laughs> double exactly double a, murderer, yeah. very yeah. high on the pecking order. <laughs> So now he's in prison. He's like, they're like, hey, we're going to rape you, OJ. You're, you, all you did was steal your own shirts. <laughs> he's like, no, I killed two people. <laughs> they're like, we saw the trial with photo quit, for blah, blah, blah. What was the, uh, now. Uh, this is what I saw after the trial. It's how stupid jurors are. After the OJ trial, I see this big fat woman. That was on because you tend to think of uh, jurors as wise or something. I don't know why, you know, but you tend to think of them as wise people, jurors. Right. But uh, afterwards, they interviewed this one woman that was a juror, big fat woman. Doesn't have <laughs> doesn't have anything to do with anything. I right. Guess. Her weight, but she was huge. Right. And uh, so she was they, smart. She probably would have known to to not eat so many cheeseburgers. <laughs> exactly. Right. So this fat pig, no, no. no. So they're interviewing her, you know, and they're, they're asking her about the blood evidence because, uh, because uh, uh, Darden talked about the blood evidence for six straight days. Yeah. He introduced all this blood evidence that showed that, you know, it was a trillion to one that it could, wasn't OJ, you know. So they say, well, you say to this uh, woman, they say, uh, well, you know, what about the blood evidence? Yeah. So she goes, everybody got blood. <laughs> she goes, if it fit, don't fit, you must quit. Yep. She remembered the rhyme. Sure, the rhyming was what did it, I think. A guy was telling me that, uh, do, you know the, do you know the lawyer Jerry Spence? Are you familiar with that lawyer? He's mm. from Colorado and he yeah, wears a cowboy hat. He cowboy hats all the time. Fringe, he wears fringe. Yeah, yeah, the, yep. yeah. So apparently in the closing arguments, you can say anything. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not bound by any anything. So um, I know this guy who worked at a law firm, and he said every time Jerry Spence would be the, de the, the, the defense, you know, he'd always get everybody off. And this is what he'd do. He'd say, no matter what the facts of the case were, he'd say, and that's, he'd talk about the case, and he'd go, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, before I go, I'd like to tell you a story. And then the other, the, you know, the prosecution would go, uh, Objection! And the lawyer, the judge would go, let him tell the fucking story. So uh, then he'd tell the story, and this was the story. He would go, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I'd like to tell you a story about a, a young boy, a precocious young boy that went up to a very old, wise old man, and the boy held in his hand a bird. And uh, he said to the wise old man, he said, you are the wisest man that I know. I have a bird in my hand, and I'm going to give you a puzzle. If you say A, you can say A or you can say B. If you say A, I will let the bird go, or I will crush the bird. If you say B, 
I will let the bird go, or I will crush the bird. What do you say, old man, A or B? And the old man thought about it, and the old man looked at the boy, and he said, son, the bird is in your hands. Ladies and gentlemen, the bird is in your hands. And he said, like, 20 minutes later, they come back, innocent! <laughs> <laughs> sort of like a multi-purpose uh, closing yeah. comment. Yeah, it worked for everything. Works every time. Yeah. That's good. And so then it's the woman formula. that drowned her 14 children, she'd get off because of the bird story. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't he, was he involved with the Ramsey case, too? John. John yes, Biden. he was, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's, uh, that sucks. <laughs> 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 oh, Jerry Spence. <laughs> All the uh, best lawyers are now colorful characters. Yeah. <laughs> it used to be they were like Clarence Darrow and stuff. Now they're just <laughs> clowns. They different... all want to get reality shows now. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You like reality shows now. Uh, I don't. I haven't been watching much TV lately. Oh, you don't? Like I, them? I thought you liked them uh, for some reason. I I uh, I've I've liked them, but I I've been, lately last year or two I haven't really been watching any television. Uh, yeah, just, I haven't either. Just nothing. Me neither. Nothing at all. I haven't. I watch seen sports, but haven't I seen one episode of the Jersey Shore. Uh, -huh. uh haven't seen one episode of uh, uh, John John and Kate plus eight. Yeah. Didn't watch uh, uh, Sarah Palin's uh, premiere. Uh -huh. I don't watch any anything. Oh, good for you. Yeah, nothing. Nothing at all. Well, you got the YouTube, man. You can just watch stuff all day on that. Yeah. So wait, now you think you think you, you think television's changed a lot for the worse now? Do you, I mean, back when you think back? Oh those, yeah, yeah, yeah. Way, 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 way worse. Yeah. Yeah. Does it make worse. you angry? Does it make you sad? Does do you miss the way things? Well, used I to would be? miss it if it wasn't for YouTube. I watch YouTube all day long. What What will you watch on YouTube if you sit down to watch YouTube? What will you type in? Give some suggestions to our listeners here. Well, as you know, I'm a I'm a Nixonophile. I'll watch anything with Richard Nixon in it. Yeah. So uh, I'm always searching for new Nixon stuff. Um, lately, I've been watching a lot of Sterling Hayden. Okay. So if you wanna if you wanna check Sterling Hayden out, there's some fascinating Christopher Hitchens stuff on there right now because he's dying of uh, esophageal cancer, and he speaks uh, speaks about it all the time on YouTube. Okay. I, now, who's Christopher? I He's the famous atheist uh, uh, that wrote "God is not great." Oh, uh, okay. Is he writing a, a new epilogue now? Just uh, in the last moments of life, maybe changing a few. Uh, no, he's changed things. nothing. No, he's changed nothing. No second guessing. No. Yeah. No. But it's fascinating because he talks about his death in a very, uh, you know, a very candid way. Yeah. yeah. What is it? Uh, well, you're, you know, I, I, I find myself somewhat fascinated by this, too, this kind of stuff. Death. Yeah, yeah. Death, yeah. Scary. Well, he was telling, well, a, he tells a very poignant and interesting story about the moment that he was in a book tour, you know, riding high. And uh, he woke up in the Four Seasons Hotel in New York coughing and vomiting and feeling nauseous and uh, ready to pass out. And he phoned 911, and they came, and they took him to the hospital, and he said later he real and he said the thing he uh, uh, feels the most in his life is that he can never he will never return to that day before when he felt fantastic. Yeah, and that he said that the the paramedics that picked him up were literally escorting him from the life of the living uh, to the life of the dying. Yeah. Yeah, very f interesting stuff. And has, has has his outlook changed now? Is he living life for the moment? Is he is he, uh, or is he just uh, not? No, happy? he says he not continues happy. on with. Uh, he continues on. He says he's uh, much more interested in uh, in what he's always been interested in, which is uh, politics and uh, and uh, and the bigger picture stuff. He finds much more interesting than uh, bone marrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way he puts it. Sure, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, now, the Bud Dwyer video is something we've talked about before, which you've uh, uh, <laughs> done a parody of, I guess. Is it a parody of, uh, in, in, in the past? Bud Dwyer, one of yeah. the few uh, people in uh, modern television history to yeah. uh, commit suicide with a handgun on camera? 
<laughs> on live television? Yeah, Bud Dwight. <laughs> The Probably only I find this funny, but I used to watch it over and over and over again. Yeah. Bud Dwyer had... <laughs> it's on YouTube, but they cut YouTube. away before he actually... Yeah, they cut away. But I, I can I got one that where they don't. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, but yeah, Bud Dwyer mm-hmm. had a, held a press conference. What do you mean? You have one? You have it was a secret tape or something? I have, yeah. I have, I have a, I'll show it to you. Yeah? But he, uh, yeah, Bud Dwyer was a Pennsylvania politician who was plagued by scandal and so forth, and so he held a... Pre- press conference in front of uh, all these press and he did a long 20 minute rambling speech at the end of which he pulled out a giant paper bag uh, from which he extracted the biggest gun you've ever seen and then blew his head off. Yeah. (laughs) 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 But I admire uh, him. I admire him. Sort of the uh, ultimate punchline, I guess. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. You know the, uh, yeah, you sort of uh, you can't get a, a, a more of a shocked reaction out of yeah. a crowd than by doing that. I yeah, guess. and one guy has a funny line. Right Do you before. admire him for that reason? Because I you like to get a shocked reaction out of people when you are performing. <laughs> no, I just I, I just admire him for uh, committing suicide in an interesting way and not a <laughs> pathetic. Uh, Way, but one guy had a very, very funny line okay. uh, right before he blew his head off. He said, uh, "No, bud, no." <laughs> right, somebody in the crowd yeah. yelled that. Bud, yeah. the guy's yeah. name was Bud. Right. <laughs> well, that that makes it uh, even crazier. <laughs> no, bud, no. <laughs> what? Uh, well, on 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 Saturday Night Live, when you did Weekend Update, often there was sort of uh, shocking. Lines like uh, about Michael Jackson. Uh, I, I, I enjoyed reading about it today about the audible gasps from the audience sometimes <laughs> when you would uh, say things about Michael Jackson. What? Yeah. Was that was that something that was in the script, or did you sort of slip some of that in? Well, no. Lauren minute? gave me a lot of latitude. He said, uh, although he said, you know, you don't want to be sued by Michael Jackson, you know. And I said, yeah, that'd be fun. Like, uh, <laughs> wouldn't it be cool being sued by Michael Jackson? Yeah. That would, that would raise your profile a little bit. Like the day after the OJ trial, which is why I was asking you about OJ earlier, the, the, the opening line of, uh, was, uh, murder is now legal in the state of California. Oh, yeah. One is of the great the lines uh, from yeah. Weekend Update well, history, I think. He, uh, Michael Jackson was more of a danger, I think, than OJ Simpson. It was, it, you know, I would rather see, I would rather have seen Michael Jackson incarcerated than O.J. Simpson, because O.J. Simpson you know, wouldn't, it wouldn't murder anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> murder is, it doesn't have a very high recidivism rate, but uh, child molesting has a hundred percent recidivism rate. What's that word? I've never used that. You word. know, repeat rate. Yeah, yeah, no, I know what you meant, but recidivism. It, recidivism. R e c i d i v i s m. Really? Murder doesn't have Check a high your recidivism. OED. What? Murder doesn't have a high recidivism rate. I don't know, I serial you. murder, but yeah. not murder, no. Yeah. So, well, there you go. <laughs> you want to so hear some about Silence of the Lambs? I learned today. Yeah, absolutely. You ever see that movie? Oh yeah. yeah. Why was uh, this? Is what a guy told me. Why was Clarice so uh, upset about the lambs? Yeah, why was why was she so upset about that? Doesn't make any fucking sense, right? Like he goes, the lambs, Clarice. You dream about the lambs, and she said she she saw some lambs like slaughtered at midnight. Who the fuck slaughters lambs at midnight? Right. And then what happened to her? She was sent to a fucking. She was sent away by her father. Okay, I'm I'm not I'm not exactly clear on what happened. I, I've sort of it's been a few years since I've seen it. He she was sent away. Okay. Yeah, she's yeah. very upset about the lambs being slaughtered. Yeah, and uh, and uh, Hannibal Lecter seizes on this, mm-hmm. and she has dreams about them. Mm-hmm. You dream about the lambs, Clarice. So this guy just told it to me, and then as soon as he said it, I was like, Yeah, it doesn't make any fucking sense. Yeah. So, anyways, it turned out. What happened was a farmer fucked her in her ass. <laughs> is, is this, is this a, a, a real uh, subtext of the movie here? Yeah. It is? Yeah. 
What, did you get the Coles notes on this? Or No, a guy told me. He wrote his dissertation on it in university. Okay. A, so fella, she, a fella named Mike Gibbons. Okay, yeah. Yeah, he told me this. So, and he said, watch Silence of the Lambs again, and you'll realize it makes no sense that uh, that uh, Hannibal Lecter keeps going, tell me about the lambs, Clarice, and she keeps getting so upset by it. Yeah. And also in the picture, he says, she has a dog that looks exactly like a lamb. Okay. So there's a little interesting piece of... What did uh, you... Uh, yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. That is interesting, yeah. Most serial killers, by the way, are not cunning. They're sub-retards. Oh, re oh, really? Yeah, and uh, I think that if they made them less cunning in uh, popular culture, it would be better for us, you know? Because most of them are, are yeah, sub-retards with IQs of 70 or 80. It's psychosexual. They, you know, they whack off all over the fucking body while they stab it. Yeah. Which is far from glamorous. Yeah. And uh, so I think instead of you calling them the Night Stalker or the Son of Sam, if you call them like the fucking guy likes whacking off over dead fucking women, maybe they wouldn't be writing the letters to the editor so much. Yeah. Probably be less uh, re... re they wouldn't be doing it as much. Yeah, because they do it. They do it for fame and glory. Yeah, you know? it's been glorified. Yeah, they were made to sort of seem like. What uh, on earth is glorious about a killer? No, nothing. Yeah, people copycat it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you think about this stuff. That'd way be a too good. Much, that'd be a, that'd be a good uh, a good uh, title for the uh, for a serial killer. The copycat. Yeah. And he could just copycat all famous serial killings. Yeah. Another idea like the tax evasion <laughs> that website we shouldn't that throw out there. you don't want to throw out there <laughs> into the into the universe. Okay, well let me do a quick quick I'm what about go this my one? questions. What about okay. this one? Yeah. You know uh, when you go to a, a, a ATM and you put your check in and then you lick the envelope and put it in? Yeah, I, I don't I haven't done that in a few years where no, you but people do it. You make deposits in the bank machine? I do. But I think some people do. But what if you poisoned all the the things that you lick? Yeah. Poison the envelopes yeah. at the ATM machine. So when people lick it, they're licking poison. That would be the uh, liquor Killer. sticker upper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and see, another I these are not more bad ideas we shouldn't be putting out there into the world. What, you got another question? Yeah, I got more questions. Yeah, I got more questions. Um... This is uh, a beautiful theater, by the way. Isn't this nice? Isn't it amazing? And and, yeah. uh, and, uh, Live from the... Uh, That's a great idea Kevin Smith had. The Smod Castle. Absolutely. Actually, we're not live. A great director that I admire greatly. Yes, this is really cool. It's, uh, it's, it's fun to be able to do this here every night. You guys having fun tonight? <laughs> All right. What a crowd you yeah, got it's tonight. Yeah, a wild crowd. Full house here tonight. Right. Full house. Uh, have you ever been arrested? <laughs> <laughs> why do you ask that well, I don't know just I, I don't know the answer that's why um, uh, seems like it's a yes to me yeah, but uh, uh, yeah I've been arrested yeah. really yeah? yeah okay I don't have I don't want to ask what for but okay. uh, unless you feel like talking about it yeah, but I got a conditional I mean I got an absolute conditional discharge to turn into an absolute discharge so I have a clear record that no one could ever find oh that's good okay um when would you consider uh, that you got in the most trouble here in, uh, it doesn't have to be when you got arrested, but uh, have you ever done anything where you've gotten, a, where you've actually felt like you've gotten in a lot of trouble? Like life-threatening, you mean? Mm, just trouble. Just something where you said to yourself, you know, uh, I'm in trouble right now. Whether it was at work, uh, at school, growing up, last week, anything. Um, um, well, one time I, I was uh, playing pool in a, a strip club, and uh, I was a young boy, you know, and uh, there was this little guy with long hair, looked a little like, uh, put me in mind of Charlie Manson. Okay. But um, he what was What year would this have been? Uh, when did were the t Tate LaBianca killings? Okay, seventies or something. Yeah, uh, no, no. He was. Uh, <laughs> this was uh, probably uh, 
I would say 78. Okay. So this was in Vancouver. So uh, I, was, I was a kid, you know, and uh, I was playing pool, and this guy kept looking at me, and I was drunk, and I was like, hey, whatever the fuck. Why, you want to fight? You fucking stop looking Wait, at you were me. drunk? I was drunk, yeah. Yeah, and you were eight? 18. Oh, 18, okay. <laughs> right, I wasn't cool. 18. I was probably like 50 or something like that. So I was like, what the fuck do <laughs> you want, man? You want f- what's the fuck, right? So uh, this guy, anyway, it turns out he's with a giant gang of people. And so instead of him getting up, 12 guys get up, and they're all walking towards me. And I go, fuck, you know. So I start backing up, you know. And um, they're getting closer and closer. So I grab a beer. It's like a fucking cool thing from a movie. I grab a beer bottle from a table, right? And I go, you want to fucking mess with me? Come on, man. Who wants to be fucking first? You know, I'm holding this fucking beer bottle, right? So this big guy comes out of the fucking crowd, and he, he takes the beer bottle from my hand and he puts it on the table. <laughs> so uh, then the little guy punches me in the face. So then I run away. <laughs> but I left my buddy there who got really badly beaten up. Yeah. <laughs> wow, yeah, that's trouble. Yeah, it hurt our friendship for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was nice of him to remove the beer bottle. Yeah, very ten gently, you know. Um, you uh, did you, you have fun making dirty work with uh, Artie Lang? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I loved it. How is uh, Artie doing? Artie's doing very well right now. Had sort of a scary. Uh, very, very frightening. Very frightening. Very frightening. He's doing well. Yeah, he's doing great. Uh, and uh, you're you're w- working on a new show for Comedy Central. Is this happening? The sports show. Uh, I want we want this to happen. Well, we did a pilot. I don't know. You know, you know how pilots work, Tom. Yeah, but it's a sports show. Yeah, it's a sports show. Uh, it's a weekly sports show. And you're you're pretty into sports. I'm somewhat. I'm not like crazy, but I like sports a lot. Okay. Well, let's. Uh, you every, know, what I like e- about everybody sports? online send an email to Comedy Central. And let's get that show on the air. You know what I like about sports now? Yeah. That I don't like about politics or religion or so forth? Is that I could talk to you about sports and have a big argument. And at the end, there would be no hard feelings. We'd love each other just like we did before. Yeah. It doesn't break up families. I would rather argue over... Unless the you're arguing with someone from Toronto about the Leafs. And that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but I would rather argue over the inconsequential than the consequential since I know nothing about either. <laughs> and everybody I talk to doesn't know a fucking thing about either. either. Yeah. Stay away from uh, religion and politics. Yeah. I mean, I, I won't stay away from religion. I'll, you know, I'll uh, go and, I'll, uh, and I'll, I'll go to my church and I'll accept my Savior, but, uh, but I'm not going to fucking talk about it and argue with people about it. No. Yeah, what about in, in on stage? Do you have do you ever do jokes about uh, religion or politics or? I make brief, uh, brief, uh, brief uh, mention of it because I'll tell you something about the Christian religion. That's the thing I like, le- like least. Is that one of our tenets is to bring other people into the fold so they can have eternal life as well. Do you understand? Now, you do that enough, you don't get invited to many parties. <laughs> and also, I don't give a fuck. I'd rather, if it was up to me, I'd rather be up on a cloud playing the harp watching my friends get raped by the devil. <laughs> <laughs> that actually would be, would be a lot of fun for me. <laughs> but anyways, I didn't write the book, and there you go. Okay, cool. Well, now, what, now what's, the, uh, what's, what's the next... Uh any stand-up dates you're excited about coming up soon? Well, I'm gonna, I, I've never performed with you before. Well, I did perform with you yes. once before. Very, when I first One started first doing times. this again, yes. you were nice enough to let, let me At come the out. The Brea uh, Improv or the Irvine Improv? One of those Irvine two? Improv, Irvine yeah. Improv, had a yeah. fun weekend out there. That was very fun, yeah. We're going to have a fun New Year's this year. You, me, and Keith Reza. Yeah, I'm excited to be actually doing something on New Year's Eve this year. What do you usually do? Often, I've had some bad New Year's. I've, I've, I've had some... St- I, I often find myself, uh, well, this is going to sound like I'm 
I don't want to boo-hoo away here, but I remember one New Year's where I was alone in my apartment in uh, Quebec, actually. I was probably about 23 years old and uh, um, depressed, actually. Didn't really feel like doing anything. And I went to bed at around 6 or something like that, thinking I'll just wake up and New Year's Day, it'll be, it'll be over. 6 right? p.m. Yeah, 6 p.m. Thinking I'll just sleep, uh, sleep through the whole thing, and then I don't have to be not doing anything on New Year's Eve. Uh, but then I woke up at uh, around 11.30 um, <laughs> because there was a party going on next door. But I didn't know the people that lived next door to me in this apartment building. And all. So I went out, and I went out and stood in the hallway by the garbage chute with uh, a bag of garbage, pretending uh -huh. I was about to toss the garbage into the garbage chute, mm -hmm. hoping, hoping that someone would open the door and invite me in for like a glass of eggnog oh, or something like sure. that. So I stood there for about 20, 25 minutes or so, and then, uh, then I uh, realized it wasn't happening, so I, I, I went back into my uh, apartment and I turned on the TV and I watched uh, Rambo was on TV. And then I went to bed. So I've had a lot of New Year's like that. Yeah, it can be sad when you're when you're alone and and next door, uh, something happy is is happening yeah. to for, to to put in more relief your despair. Yeah. One time I was in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, and I had lost all my money, and um, went back in shock, up the elevator and to my room, where I lay down upon my bed, and then kind of stunned and sad. And alone, and in the next room, raucous sex. You know, right behind me. Right. Uh, just all, just the hottest sex. You know, and it made me very, very depressed. And so I turned on the porno. You know, on that Spectravision, and uh, exact same sound. Yeah. So uh, the guy was just watching the same porno as yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then I got creeped out, and I couldn't whack off anymore. <laughs> kind of hard to jack off in tandem with the guy in the room next to you, right? You know, yeah. You, know, you don't really want to want watch the movie anymore. <laughs> no. Well, this has been great. This has been a lot of fun, Norm. We're going to take a couple of questions from the audience. Oh, cool. Uh, I, I uh, appreciate you coming down here. Yeah, no, it's you know, fun, this man. This is uh, always exciting. Let's take a few questions from the audience here. Uh, I'm going to actually go out to the audience right now. Well, you, he's got a, a mic there. You have yeah. to go? Yeah, I, I'm going to go out there because I want to be like Monty Hall. Oh, okay, Monty Everybody Hall. Phil Donahue. Check. We on here? Yes. Okay, uh, raise, raise your hand if you have a question for Norm. McDonald, here we go. What's hey, your name? My name is Anne. Stand, stand up, Anne. I don't think I can stand any taller. <laughs> oh, no poop, right? No poop. No poop on the microphone. Um, you say you have lots of stories uh, of uh, Chris Kattan. What's one of them that's memorable? <laughs> About Chris Kattan? Um, well, there was this one time where he uh, was very, very memorable. Because we always made, we always came to the table with different characters, you know, on uh, Wednesday for the Saturday show. You'd have to come there with a character that you created. And uh, here, Chris Kattan, out of the blue, came to the table with a character who was heterosexual. <laughs> <laughs> that is a, a, a funny, a weird, weird story. Okay, next question, next question. Who else, uh, someone else, raise your hand. Come on, someone else with a question for Norm MacDonald. Yeah, I saw your <laughs> hand up there. Okay, excuse me here. Uh, what's your name, sir? And uh, stand up and uh, introduce yourself to Norm. My name's Mike. Hey, hey I, Mike. Saw, I saw you uh, in St. Louis, Missouri uh, about a year or so. Oh, uh, really? And you, you quoted some crazy uh, long limerick of a country line or something that uh, a man had told you the night before. You know what I'm talking about? You ended the show with it, and nobody laughed. But it was really long-winded. And oh, was it the uh, was it Shel Silverstein's "The Ballad of Billy Markham"? It could have been. Oh, you want me to do that? Yeah. Oh. Um, <laughs> how'd that go? Uh, um, how'd that go? 
You ask, you go for another question. I'll another question. Another. another question. Strange things done in the midnight sun, but yeah. anymore. Are you from St. Right. Louis? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's uh, you just uh, stumped the band there. <laughs> that's pretty good. Okay. Well, another question. Oh, I got it. Oh, the devil walked into Linabaz on a rainy Nashville night as the lost souls sat and sipped their soup in the yellow neon light. The devil, he looked around the room, then he got down on his knees. He said, "Is there anyone among you scum who will roll these dice with me?" Now, Red, he just looked away and took another sip of beer. Eddie, he just strummed his guitar and pretended not to hear. Vince, he said, not me, I'll pass. I've shot, had my share of hell. And kept scribbling on a napkin with some song he was sure it'd sell. Ronnie kept whispering low to the, snutch, cl- to the snuff queen clutching at his sleeve. Somebody coughed and the devil scoffed and he turned on his heel to leave. Hold on, said the voice from the back of the room before you walk out of that door. If it's some action you're looking for, friend, well, I've rolled some dice before. And there stood Billy Markham. He'd been on the scene for years, singing all them raunchy songs of the town we want to hear. He'd been cut and bled 1,000 times, and his eyes were wise and sad. All his songs were the songs of the street. All his luck was bad. I know you uses Billy Markham from any a dark and funky place, but you always spoke in a different voice and you wore a different face. While me, I've gambled here a music row with hustlers and with whores. And hell, I ain't afraid to roll them devilish dice of yours. Well, I can get down, says the devil, just as if you was going to pray. Take these dice in your luckless hands to tell you how the game is played. You get one roll and you bet your soul. And if you roll 13, you win. And all the joys of flesh and gold are yours to touch and spend. But if that 13 don't come up, you better kiss your ass goodbye and will your useless bones to God because your goddamn soul is mine. 13, says Billy Markham. Well, I've played in tougher games. I've loved ambitious women and I've rode on wheelless trains. So give me room, you stinking fiend, and let it all unwind. Ain't nobody rolled a 13 yet, but this just might be the time. Billy Markham, he takes the dice... The dice are as heavy as stones. They should, they should, the devil cries, because they're carved from Jesus' bones. Billy Markham, he turns the dice, and the dice, they have no spots. Sorry, says the devil, but they're the only dice I got. Well, shit, says Billy Markham, you know, I really don't mean to bitch, but I never thought I'd stake my soul on a sucker's game like this. Well, then walk away, says the devil. Ain't nobody tying you down. Walk away where, says Billy Markham. This is the only game in town. But I really should say, before I make my play, that if I should chance to lose... I will this guitar to some would-be star who ain't afraid to sing the honest blues, who ain't afraid to say the words like damn or shit or fuck, who ain't afraid to bear his ass in the stage where he makes his bucks. But if he should play this guitar safe, sing some sugary lies, I'll haunt him till we meet in hell. Now give me them fucking dice. And Billy Markham, he takes the dice and he yells, come on, 13. And the dice they roll and they come up blank. You lose, the devil screams. But I really should say, before we go on our way, I sure do like your style. Of all the fools I played and beat, you're the first that's lost with a smile. Well, shit, says Billy Markham, you know, these odds were too damn bad. Thirteen years of music row, that's the best damn chance I've had. So Billy Markham and the devil, they walk out of Linabaugh's door, leaving Billy's beat-up guitar lying there on the floor, and if you go into Linabaz now, you can see it there today, hanging from a nail on a wall of peeling gray, Billy Markham's old guitar that nobody dares to play. That one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Norm MacDonald, everybody. Norm MacDonald, any last questions? <laughs> any last? How, how do you know this uh, poem? Some guy told me it in uh, St. Louis the night before. <laughs> I have a good memory. <laughs> and you could you remember the whole thing from the night before? Uh, yeah, I have a good memory, Tom. Do you have a photographic memory? Is that what it's called? Uh, my dad had a photographic memory. I'm not sure I have one. Wow. <laughs> I think you probably do. Well, this has been a lot of fun tonight. Thank you, Norm McDonald. Thanks, Tom. In. That was awesome. Thanks for coming, guys. Always good to see you. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, everybody here tonight at the show. Everybody who came down to the Smod Castle. I'll be taking... Uh, a couple of weeks off for the holidays, and then we'll be back in January. So tell your friends, thanks for coming. Good Happy night, everybody. New Year's. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy With New the Year. The Tom Green Show. 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 The 
Tom G.